Hey folks, welcome to the Transplant with today. My name is Jim Merle. I'm sitting out here in a car rider line outside of my kids' school, pretty much bored and decided I'd talk to you for just a few moments about a subject that I brought up more than one occasion here lately. And that has to do with sleep and the use of sleep aids, particularly the use of Ambien in my life. Now, let me start out in the beginning by saying a few things. Number one, yes, I take Ambien on a daily basis to help me sleep. Number two, I pretty much will admit I'm just about addicted to it. I'm not an abuser of it, but I do feel like my body has become addicted to it, and that's because I have to have it or I'm not going to sleep, period, hands down. If I run out of medicine or forget to take it, I never even close my eyes, okay? I just cannot sleep. So that's a bad thing. And then number three, let me say in the beginning, if you're not already on a sleep aid, something like Ambien or one of the derivatives of it, try your best not to get on one, okay? Just try your best to come up with any other way on the sun to get to sleep because in my opinion, kind of once you get on these medications, it's almost hard to undo, okay? So I've been on Ambien now for almost five years since my transplant. It's something the doctors gave me in the hospital just to help me kind of take the edge off and I'm still on it. That's just the way that it is. But anyway, I thought I'd share with you a couple of pretty much horror stories of being on Ambien and try to help you to understand that it's not always uh, the best medication or you may as well call it a drug to be on. Now, most of the uh, things that I've had surrounding Ambien in my life have to do with a couple things. Number one, what I call time loss. And that is basically, if I take my Ambien and don't go directly to bed, I'll find out the next morning I've actually lost time. I won't remember uh, how I got to bed, when I got to bed, what happened before I went to bed, and according to what my family recounts to me the next day or what the evidence shows, which you'll understand more with a little story in a moment, I, I've, I've lost time, okay? That's the only thing I can say. You lose time in your life. You don't know what's happened. That's a terrible, terrible side effect and a problem that I have. Number two, during those time loss events, more specifically, I eat, okay? And I'm not particularly worried about my weight. I had never had a problem with my weight. I know many of you do, and especially us as post-transplant patients can, being on prednisone and other drugs, but I haven't. And I'm not so worried about eating, you know, after taking the medication, it's what I eat, okay? While I'm in a time loss moment, there's no telling what I'm liable to throw together, even cook. I found evidence the next morning of cooking. I've even had my children tell me before that, you know, after I stayed up and cooked, that, uh, you know, they knew I didn't know what I was doing, and uh, let's just say I was encouraged to make some food that wasn't all that great. Cleaning the refrigerator out type stuff, you know, eating stuff that probably should have been thrown out last week, and I've got it out, warmed it up, and ate it. Or, you know, pouring a whole bottle of hot sauce into macaroni and cheese and then standing there eating it with my children pretty much watching and telling me not to do it. That's the type of thing I've done before. And then thirdly, and this is where kind of a whole account or story comes in, Probably the worst of the worst was the night that I took my Ambien, did not go immediately to bed, which again, I recommend you go straight to bed if possible. Uh, follow my tips in some of my other videos as far as how to make that medication maybe more effective or how to get better sleep habits. But not going directly to bed and then getting involved doing something else that caused one of these time lapses to come up. For example, the one night that I, I took my medicine told my family about 9 p.m. I'm going out to feed the dogs, which I do a lot of nights. I like to walk out, see the stars, feed the dogs, take care of business, come back in. It takes like five minutes. But I went out about 9 one night. At 11 o'clock, I woke my family up, banging on the door. By then, I had been locked out because my wife was convinced that I'd gotten my truck and went somewhere, I guess. But I had been locked out or either locked myself out. We're not exactly sure how it happened. Sorry about that. Uh, but anyway, uh, banging on the door, demanding to be let in. She knows I'm not acting right by that point, so even my wife refuses to let me in the door. Um, finally, when they see that I've calmed down a little bit, they let me in the door, and I pretty much keep them up all night, acting crazy, talking out of my head, and telling them how I had been outside chasing, quote unquote, those wild dogs and how that uh, I had been over and got the neighbor up and had him to come out and help me chase off the wild dogs. And even having got on my son's bicycle, and I'm talking about a, a 20 inch kid's bike, 
got on my son's bicycle and rode it all around the yard and uh, you know left it laying out in the front yard by the road all that kind of stuff the whole way I don't remember any of this I'm telling them it didn't happen uh, they finally take me and say look outside where's the bike and the bike is right where they said it was and I began to notice by then and this is at the next morning mind you they're very angry at me for keeping them up and and for what all I've done the night before and noticing by then that I'm extremely sore I don't know what all has happened but I'm I'm sore okay and then realizing as I began to you know get out of my pajamas get ready to get dressed for the day whatever I've got big skin marks I'm talking scrape marks on my shoulders down my leg my leg is killing me turns out I wrecked this bicycle uh, the pedal or something caught my leg and skinned down the side of my knee and shin I guess from where I hit on the ground then I you know scraped my shoulder and arm up it's not good okay why am I telling you this? Am I telling you this because I'm trying to be funny? No, it's probably humorous looking in from the outside, but I promise you it was no fun whatsoever. Uh, I totally recommend that if you can avoid these sleep aids, do it, okay? Don't get on them, but if you are on one and you're having to deal with it, you know, do as I said in the other video in short, and please go ahead and watch it. Uh, be sure that you go straight to bed. Be sure that you, you know, you're uh, drinking plenty of water those meds be sure that you know you're taking that on the full or empty stomach whichever works best for you make sure you optimize that medicine and make sure you sleep okay these medications are not joking when they say you know don't take this medication unless you can get a full night's rest because you're going to pay for it if you don't okay and so i'm just telling you not the best experience in the world uh some scary things go on and i have to be very very cautious okay and uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you've dealt with. If you'd like to comment below this video, you don't have to tell your deepest, darkest, crazy secret stories, but comment below this video. Do you take a sleep aid? If so, are there some side effects or there some problems with it that you're having? Do you have any recommendations for something that actually works as well, but at the same time doesn't come with these side effects? I would love to hear about that. I appreciate your attention today. I gotta get my kids here picked up. So until next time, please, Stay stronger, friends.